It is a new dawn for Africa after 44 leaders of AU member states signed the Continental Free Trade Agreement, which opens a 1.2 billion people market to each of the nations once ratified. Speaking during the signing ceremony in Kigali, Rwanda, AU Commission Chairperson Musa Faki Mahamat said the agreement demolishes the colonial physical boundaries, allowing free movement of people and goods across the continent. Sylvia Chibet reports from Kigali. It's a historical event that brings Africa to the cusp of greatness. A continental free trade area bringing together 1.2 billion people in 55 countries with a combined GDP of 340 trillion shillings is finally here. What is at stake is the dignity and well-being of Africa's farmers, workers and entrepreneurs, particularly women and youth. The late uh, Ahmed Benbilla in May 1963 had urged his colleagues to die a little, if not totally, for the liberation of Africa. Today, we must all be inspired by a similar spirit of sacrifice for the sake of the integration of the continent. The time is no longer for hesitation. And so one after the other, heads of states and governments, among them President Uhuru Kenyatta, signed the agreement committing to make the free trade area a reality. Some countries had a last-minute change of heart, leaving only 11 out of 55 AU member states out. They will, however, be given time to prepare and come on board. South Africa will now be accessible to Kenyan manufacturers to sell their goods and services. Libya, Tunisia, Central African Republic, countries that we have never had trade agreements with will now be feeling as if we are trading with our East African members that we have been doing a lot of business with so far. Besides the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, the leaders also appended their signatures to the Kigali Declaration and the Protocol on the Free Movement of People. Only 27, however, signed the protocol allowing Africans to travel without visa requirement within the continent. We should ensure that Africans are no longer treated like foreigners on their own continent while others move therein freely. Of course, you know, each country has got its own immigration regulations, but it has to be done in a much improved manner like we have already done as East African member states, where today I can visit Rwanda with my identity card and vice versa. A new Africa, one of business without borders, has now taken shape. In line with the aspirations of the African Union Agenda 2063, the Africa we want. The real test of commitment, however, will be the ratification of the document by the respective countries. Sylvia Chibet, Citizen TV, Kigali, Rwanda.